All right, hey everyone. I uh, want to make a video. It's really the first video I've done on uh, about U-boat. Um, excited for this. Uh, I'm myself kind of a long-term uh, subsimmer. Uh, I relatively recently bought U-boat. I don't know, maybe a couple months ago, and I've kind of picked it up, picked it up, and put it down, and all that, and uh, uh, got kind of uh, dejected with it. And then I would sort of pick it up again, and then get disappointed again. But when the TDC mod came out. Uh, that's really what sold it for me, uh, coupled with the fact that I can do, um, so if any of you are in the Wolfpack community, you kind of know me as the guy who likes to do historical procedures and, um, you know, reads the log books and tries to figure out how they did it, uh, how they got their data and all that kind of stuff, so I try to kind of replicate that in Wolfpack, or excuse me, in U-Boat, and I've, I've been pretty successful with it, and so I'm going to... I'll demonstrate some of those methods in different videos, but um, for now we're just going to cover the uh, the TDC mod itself. So um, what I did was I spawned a um, I spawned a ship um, just to demonstrate uh, the uh, the concepts here. We're not going to shoot him. We're just going to use him as a reference point to uh, set the TDC up. Right. So. Uh, it spawned directly behind me, going about a 90 degree AOB. So, uh, just for, for starters, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to turn parallel uh, to him, and uh, and we'll kind of go from there. Okay, so I'm gonna turn a parallel course, and while we're doing that, uh, we can go over the uh, we'll go over the TDC in detail. So the Oh, first of all, let me change the lighting so we can see. Uh, we don't need you on the AP. You can come down here and change the lights. Let's get the white yeah. light on. Okay, so... Um, there we go. So, TDC mod. So, what these guys have done is basically replicated exactly the historical German TDC. Uh, in German, this device is called the Torpedo Vorhaltrechner, uh, the, the uh, torpedo uh, lead, lead angle calculator, essentially. Uh, what was represented in the game, in the mod here, is actually a later model of the computer. Uh, and how you know that is because of this um, impact angle light right here. This was added later, like say, like 1940, late maybe later, 41, 1942. Uh, that's how you know it's a later model. But it, but even the early war models essentially fun fun function the same way. So uh, I'll start, I guess, from maybe from top to bottom and just go through everything on here, and then we'll, we'll go through um, how how they actually use this thing. So let me just make sure that we're not going to blow by this target. All right, so we've got. Starting from the top left, uh, we've got this dial here. This, this in German, it's, in English, this literally means lead angle. Uh, that is not what this is. Uh, this is, in fact, the impact angle. Uh, this is the in German what was known as the Schneidungswinkel. This is the uh, the angle at which your torpedo will intersect the target. Um, ideally, you want this to be as close to 90 as you can get it. Okay, so the next dial over, this is pretty self-explanatory, this is target speed, I think everybody's pretty much familiar with the concept here. Uh, the inner dial inside here is the torpedo speed, so that obviously you can set um, on here as well. Um, the, 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 the caveat with this is that you actually need to set the speed in here as well, down here, and, uh, uh, using the normal interface. That is actually historically correct because the TDC, all the TDC did with respect to uh, torpedo speed was communicate that speed to the torpedo room and the uh, torpedo men would actually set the speed manually into the eels. Okay? So that is uh, that is relatively uh, historically accurate there, how, how they've got this implemented. Okay, So that's that. Uh, target speed. Let's just see where we're at relative to him. Okay, let's go. Um, all right, so onward. The the next one over is the parallax angle. This is a little obscure for people. 
basically what this what this is is the angular error that's caused by the fact that we are not shooting our torpedoes out of our periscope but we're shooting our torpedoes about 28 meters in front of where the periscope is okay that that angular error that's represented by that distance is called parallax um, it is in fact the only reason why you need range as an input into the TDC range assuming you're shooting at a, a torpedo that does not turn okay is so basically if you were shooting it out of your periscope like literally if the torpedo left the lens of your periscope the torpedo wouldn't turn it would be just shooting straight like a gun um, whereas because we have let's you know if you're shooting a target that's to your left okay if you shot your torpedo out of your periscope that torpedo go, would go straight up toward the target well in this case in the u-boat you know the torpedo is leaving the boat 20 20 some odd meters in front and then it's got to run about nine and a half meters before it even makes its turn and then it's got a turn radius of about almost 100 meters so you can see that those differences add up quickly and those differences are represented by this parallax angle the closer the the um the closer you are to the target okay and the higher your gyro angle is let's just whoops let's just set this artificially up to be a, a high gyro angle, okay, um, like uh, like this. Okay, that's a high gyro angle right there. And a, at far ranges, parallax error is minimal because the triangle is stretched very very thin. At close ranges, the parallax e error gets enormous. You can see that right there because the closer you're getting, um, you're bringing that uh, that uh, the target closer to the boat that angle is getting larger, okay, for lar at large gyro angles like this. So this is, you want it for a real accurate shot, you want to kind of have parallax sort of close to zero. It's uh, usually a good rule of thumb. Okay, so that's that. This is the parallax switch. This tells the computer, Bukov are bow tubes and Hekor is your stern tube. This tells the computer where to compute the parallel fr parallax from, either the bow or the stern, okay? This is the, the manual bearing input dial or uh, knob. It's really not needed. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory. It's just set, setting the bearing manually, right? Uh, down here, this is the uh, the actual run distance of the torpedo. Uh, the the top part is Schussentfernung. That is the actual shooting range, and then the bottom part is what's known as Torpedo Laufstrecke, which is the torpedo running distance. Okay, this is different than the uh, then the range to, to target here, which is here. This is the actual effective distance that the torpedo is going to run. Okay. Uh, this is the range dial. Uh, obviously self-explanatory. This is, this is the, uh, denominated in hectometers, which is uh, meters divided by 100. Uh, one hectometer is 100 meters. So that's how you set that. Um, the middle one here, this is the gyro angle. This is very, very important. Uh, and it's important because when I mentioned that range doesn't matter, uh, it matter, range matters when your gyro angle is not zero. Range is, hardly matters when your gyro angle is zero. Okay, so if I have a shot, for example, uh, let's say I'm bow right, okay, bow right, and we've got um, we've got a um, you know a target of X speed at X range or whatever, the bearing is going to be just left of my bow. This right here is a zero. This is a zero gyro angle shot right here. That both of these pointers are pointing exactly up to zero. Pointing exactly up to zero. Okay, so that's a zero. That means the torpedo will not turn when it leaves the tube. Okay, so that's what that means. Uh, you want this to be as these dials to be as close. To, these dials to be as close to zero as you could possibly get them meaning both pointing straight up to be the most accurate because that will basically eliminate range as a factor in the uh, affecting the solution okay so that's what that is um, the next pair of dials here this is the uh, shift pylon is the um, bearing to the target uh, there are a couple components to this the one that's turning back and forth there uh, that is the um, uh, that is where the optics are pointing. You can see because of the weather, where our boat is yawing a little bit, so you can see that uh, you know that the bearing is uh, changing ever so slightly. Uh, 
the the bottom this top dial is a vernier scale this each one of these represents one degree uh, the bottom is in tens the top one is in ones that's how you read this okay so that little rectangle is where the optics are pointing the inner pointer is where the computer thinks the bearing is and how that is coupled together is by way of this follow switch that couples the bearing in the computer to the bearing of the optics okay that's very important we'll see that later this light here this blue light and when it's on that means that these that the computer is decoupled from the optics when it's off it means it's coupled um, historically the way this worked is um, when you had when the when the whoever was aiming had the scope or the UZO or whatever on the target, they would they would say follow, and they would, the the operator would throw this handle, and when the when the operator when the uh, excuse me when the aimer took the uh, scope off the target, it would say blue blau to to decouple it again. And the reason for that is because now if I have it decoupled, I can turn this, and the gyro angle is not going to change. Whereas if I have it coupled like this, now look, I'm, I'm panning the optics, now this is changing. It's not ideal to have that changing all the time because this old analog computer from the 40s, while it was, you know, cutting edge technology back then, you know, it was still subject to having things get mixed up inside and whatnot. So the best practice was to always throw that switch off so that you uh, didn't screw anything up in the computer. And I'll be honest with you, um, I do that even in game because if you're, say you're at the scope or whatever, and you're you're, you're playing the skipper and you're at the scope and you mouse wheel out of that and you don't throw this off again meaning you don't set it to blue you'll come back and I guarantee you your AOB will be off um, so it's always good to throw this and make it blue before you leave the scope okay so that's a, an important takeaway all right so that's this 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 little light here that says Dekong um, it has a different function in the game than it had in reality uh, in the game, it simply means that your AOB switch is thrown, like down here, okay? Uh, in reality, what that did was, um, that was a signal to the TDT operator that the gyro angle that's showing in the, that's currently set in the torpedoes matches the gyro angle that he's seeing on the computer. So, after everything was set, and they were ready to shoot, um, he would watch for that dekung, he would watch for that light, okay? And as soon as it lit up, he would say, dekung, and the uh, that would give the that would give the signal to the uh, whoever's doing the shooting that it was safe to shoot that, uh, that, the, that the gyro angle that was expected is indeed set into the torpedoes okay so that's that um, uh, so we're down here now this is uh, the target course the uh, angular course change dial so uh, the TDC we'll see this will make a little more sense in a little while but basically the TDC once it was set up correctly would take your own course changes into account and it, your own course changes would not affect the AOB setting but you have to select this in, it in order to get it to work in the mod okay uh, the next dial here is the angle on bow dial this is pretty self-explanatory the Germans used a system of uh, right and left so they uh, if anybody is not familiar with AOB that is simply the bearing from the target ship, if you were standing on the deck of the target ship to your U-boat, that is what angle on bow is. Okay, if you're if you're on the target ship and you have to look 20 degrees off your off of your starboard bow to see the U-boat, then the AOB is 20 degrees. Okay, so you sort of envision yourself on the target ship looking at your U-boat. That's angle on bow. If you're if the bow looks like it's going right, like in the case of this guy here, bow right, like that guy's about bow right 90. Okay. And you'd set bow right if it was bow left you set bow left okay that's pretty self-explanatory this is target length uh, you can set target length by the values in the rec manual I don't typically use the rec manual so maybe in a future video I will show you a way of, um, of, of, of getting a, a good spread angle without having to use the style okay but I, but suffice it to say what this does is it basically uses the inputs for um, target range, target angle on bow, and target length to compute the spread necessary to cover the target. Okay, that's what that is. And this is the this is the spread angle here. Another important thing is you need to set, I believe, this button here. 
you have to click that to set the, the spread uh, to make sure the spread is the dispersion dial is correct here. Okay, so um, that needs, that's important. You need to do that as well. And that's actually consistent with history. Uh, the spread angle was actually set in the torpedoes themselves. It was not set on the TDC. The TDC merely communicated the desired angle to the torpedo room, and the torpedoes were set with the spread angle by hand, okay? By a, by a large uh, red wheel. So that's that. Uh, this, this last one right here, dial, is uh, the... Uh, um, uh, turn speed correction dial in German that's known as the Drehgeschwindigkeitsverbesserung. That is the improvement or correction of the for the turning speed. Okay, so the German TDC could the German TDC could actually take could, um, allow for shooting while turning. So if you had a if you had a um, uh, uh, if you wanted to shoot on the surface while turning, which is a common tactic that was done. Uh, you could say, okay, I want red three, which would road rei, which is, means uh, basically a hard to, hard to port turn. Uh, the operator would set this to, to red to, to to port three, and at that point, the the uh, the uh, U boat could make a turn at, at left full rudder, and the gyro angle would still be correct. Uh, the reason why this was needed is because the mechanism that would that would update the gyro angle was not fast enough to compensate for the change in bearing caused by the U-boat's turn and so this was actually installed in there to make that possible okay all right so that covers the dials um, the switches on the side are these would be a little um, unknown to people that are not used to this uh, historical mod here representation of the TDC I already kind of covered this this links the optics to the uh, to the computer right here. Follow target to follow the target like this. Okay, that syncs the optics to the TDC to the optics. Okay, the the switch at the bottom here, right here. This is called Nagelaufend, which basically means translates roughly to uh, continuously update AOB. Um, the once this is set, uh, then the uh, every angle, every degree that the bearing changes, the AOB will change by an equal amount, uh, which makes sense, right? Like if, if I have, for example, this target right here at, at 275, let's say it's at 90 AOB. And if there's another target 10 degrees left of it, that is going to have an AOB of 80, okay? If there's a target, whoops, if there's a target 10 degrees to the right of it, that's going to have an AOB of 100. All right, that's pretty self-explanatory. That's just simply... Uh, how this works. Every degree of bearing change is, is going to correspond to one degree of change in AOB. The German TDC will take that into account, but it needs to be told to do that, and, it, and it's told to do that by way of this Lagerlaufend. Okay? Historically, what the switch also did was it told the computer to take your own course changes into account. The mod, the implementation of that functionality in the mod is by way of this dial here, you need to click on it. So we'll we'll actually demonstrate that here in a second. So I will set this I will set this target up in the TDC, and then that should be good for this video. Uh, I won't go ahead and, and engage this target, but just to show you how this how this should be set up in the TDC. So historically, this is how it would work, and this is how it works in the game. So what you've got is you've got uh, I got a target here. I'm going to say it's AOB. The angle on bow is right 90. Okay. So the very first step, and say I don't know its speed yet, okay? So I'm not going to bother with speed or range or anything like that. I'm just going to set the AOB in here. So the first step is I, I'm already on, I'm on blue here, right? I want to make sure that I'm on the target, okay, right there. That's where I want to set the AOB, right in the center of the target. I select follow. That slaves the optics to the TDC, or the TDC to the optics, rather. Um, nope, excuse me. Don't set that yet. Set AOB first. Uh, that's going to go right 90, okay? Right 90. That's set, okay? Now I know that's set. I select follow, and then I click this right here, to, and it, you'll hear a click. And this will tell the this will tell the computer to take the, our own course changes into account. And then I throw the Lagerlaufen switch. Now any course changes I make are going to update the AOB. Um, to, to be the same and then let's demonstrate how that actually works so so here we go we're at we're at 90 okay uh, if I pan if I pan the scope you can see the AOB is indeed changing which is what we want okay now if I change 
this you see this dial moving here it tells you that you got the setup correctly and it's taking your own course changes into account so let's actually change course to see what happens we're going to turn uh let's just make a make somewhat of a hard turn here and we're going to keep the optics pointed exactly at the target and we're going to uh, watch the aob look at that it's actually it's spot on the aob is not changing at all okay and that's what we want because what's happening now is the TDC is taking our own course change into account and not and not changing the AOB uh, at all. That's exactly what we want. That's that is that's that's what the that's the functionality that the computer did. Um, it was it was uh, basically a, an ingenious way of uh, making the computer um, understand what was going on and and make your give you total freedom of maneuver uh, in order to. Um, uh, to not have to reset everything because if you remember like on the, the SH3 TDC for example the SH3 TDC if you change course you had to actually reset the AOB every time okay so that the historical device did not work that way it was much it was more advanced than that you could actually set this up this way and it was and it would work okay uh, so that is the that is the component for um, updating your own course AOB based on your own course changes okay so that is a very important step um, so you can see as the target moves forward the angle on bow is changing but not because I'm changing course I change me changing course is not impacting that at all okay so that is that is how this works um, that is basically all the dials of the TDC um, kind of in a nutshell um, if you have any questions about any of this please let me know um, I am Stostrup on um, on uh, in U-Boat Discord, uh, and so please uh, feel free to shoot me a note if you have any questions on anything that I covered in this. Okay, thank you.